RTMP is still the de facto protocol for live streaming from an encoder, but if you want to repackage that RTMP stream into other options to reach a wider audience, you'll need Wowza Streaming Engine. To demonstrate how to connect an RTMP encoder to a media server for repackaging, we'll use OBS Studio as our encoder software. It's a free tool any broadcaster can download. Wowza Streaming Engine will be our media server, automatically repackaging incoming streams into a number of protocols, and we'll be using VLC Media Player for playback. It'll playback RTMP, RTSP, HLS, and MPEG Dash. Starting in Wowza Streaming Engine, we'll need to first go under Server to access source authentication. Here we'll add a new source username and password to help secure source connections to the server. Since all the software we're running is on the same system, we could also choose to disable the security rather than adding the source authentication. I'll show where this is located in a minute. Now, to get a live stream going, we'll need to go to Applications and add a new application. We'll do this under Live, Single Server, or Origin. Name it something memorable, and then add it in. We'll see here the different protocols the stream will be repackaged into for playback. You can limit these as necessary. In the left menu is all the options available for this application. It's under Source Security that we can edit the settings should we not want authentication required. For now, we'll leave this alone. Over in Sources Live, we can find the application connection settings we need to connect to OBS Studio. There are other quick selects for many of the popular encoders and cameras, but we just really need to know the host server, host port, and application. Now usually this information is formatted like so, with an additional stream name of your choice, as well as stream source authentication information, which we can add later, but there are some cases where we'll need to add the source authentication information directly into the URL, depending on our encoder or encoder software. Again, we can always turn authentication off. Alright, now that the media server is ready, let's open up OBS Studio. If you've never used OBS before, you'll need to add a source such as a video capture device. We'll create this and have it use the webcam. Most likely, that means we're going to be broadcasting at 720p. Now we can go over into settings to set up our connection. Under stream, we'll select from the service drop-down menu, custom. Now we'll enter the URL and stream key the stream key being the name we want for the stream. And we'll check to use authentication and then enter the source authentication username and password we created earlier. And that should be all we need to do when it comes to setting up OBS. Start streaming. If everything's running correctly, you'll see indications that we're streaming live below. Heading over to Wowza Streaming Engine Manager, we can go under Incoming Streams and see that this stream is active. Select the stream, and then using the test player, you can see the streams running through different streaming protocols. Some of the protocols won't be available unless you've installed the correct plugins for your browser. Another way to test some of these streams using different protocols is to copy the URL from the test player open VLC Media Player, and using the Open Network option, paste in the URL, and then see it running. For some options that aren't listed, we may want to pull the URL from the Mobile tab. For example, using RTMP, we can just change the start of RTSP to be RTMP. Okay, one last thing you may want to think about. There are some great players out there that you can use to embed a live stream on a website. However, in order to get them working, you'll need to have a static IP address on your server that they can reach. Otherwise, when testing, they're most likely going to error out. That's it for me. Thanks for watching everyone, and happy streaming.